Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to talk about controlling callbacks with state. In the previous interactive examples, we've already seen how inputs immediately affect outputs. Basically, as soon as values were entered into our input, the page updates to reflect any changes to the output. But what if we wanted to wait before displaying the page? What if we wanted some time to enter a series of changes before actually submitting them for the update? Well, this is where dash dependencies state comes in. So just like we imported input and output from dash dependencies, we can also import state from dash dependencies. Dash offers the ability to store saved changes and then send them back on command. You can think of this as analogous to hitting a submit button on a form. You first fill out all the information on the form and then you hit submit in order to update something. Your information doesn't get updated as you fill out the actual form. It's only upon hitting submit that the state gets called. So state is added to the app callback along with an input and output. And that's really the main implementation. It's just adding another thing to app.callback. And then that state, just like you did for input and output, is connected to a component ID and a property ID in order to report back. And you can check out the component API documentation to see what properties are available for the components. What we're going to do now is create a simple input and output example and then add on a state call to it. So let's get started by heading over to our text editor. Okay, first things first, we're going to do our imports. We'll say import dash, we'll import dash core components as DCC. We'll also import dash HTML components as HTML. And then from dash dot dependencies, we're now going to import three things. We'll do input, output, and then state. And we won't use state right away. Instead, we'll add on state later. So those are our imports. We're going to create an application. And let's first create an application that only needs an input and output, and then we can add on state to it later. So in our app layout, what we're going to do is say html.div, and then we're going to add in an input from a core component. So we'll say dcc.input, we'll give it an ID. We'll go ahead and say, call this number in. We'll give it a default value of one. And then let's make the font size on this a little bigger. So I can do that by saying style is equal to, and I can pass in font size here to be something larger, maybe something like 24. And then after this, we're going to have HTML and we'll have a header one component. We'll give an ID of number out. So all this is going to do is someone's going to be able to choose a number in the input and then H1 is going to reflect it. And we've done something very similar before with an input and then a div reporting back what's being written back out. So we need a function to actually do this. We'll create an output function, takes in some number, and then it returns back that same number. And let's connect this now to return that number to this output and accept that number from this input. So we'll say app.callback. The output we're going to do, the ID is called number in, or excuse me, number out for the output. So number out. And then what we want here is children because it's an HTML element. And then what we will do here for the input, remember this goes in as a list, is we want the number in, ID component, and the property we want to grab is the value property. So that's the number in that's going to go into this output, and then it's going to return that number. So let's save this, and we'll run our application. We'll say if name is equal to main, we'll say app.runServer. Okay, let's make sure that works and we don't have any typos here. We're going to say Python and I'm calling this basic.py. So I will run this. It looks like it's running. Let's head over to the browser. Okay, here I am in the browser. Looks like if I provide a number, it immediately gets updated. And in fact, if you provide anything into this input, it'll get updated. Our variable just happens to be called number, but the input can accept any sort of text. So notice here, it's getting immediately updated. but you may only want to update upon hitting a submit button. So that's where state comes in. Right now, everything is live. As you update this, the updating is being live. What we're going to do now is show you how you can add state to your application. So let's go back and edit this. 
Okay, we're going to start off by adding another component to our layout, and that's going to be an HTML button. We'll say HTML button, and we need to provide a few parameters here. One is an ID, so we can actually link this up with another input, so we're going to say this is a submit button. You can call this ID whatever you want. Then another parameter we're going to set is n underscore clicks. n underscore clicks, that's a parameter that's actually available for any HTML component, and it's actually going to track how many times this button was clicked. So we're going to set its default as zero to start off with. You technically don't need to report back the number of clicks, but it is there for you, and it's actually available for all HTML components in Dash. So if you check out their documentation, every single HTML component is gonna have n underscore clicks as an option for you. So that's a parameter. The children parameter is just going to be the text that is displayed inside of this button. So we can say something like submit here, and that's going to be the text shown in the button. And then finally, we can edit its style if we want. So we'll go ahead and make the font size a little larger. Let's match it up with 24, like we did for that input. And then a comma at the end of this, because it's another component in this list inside this div. So we just added our button. Now let's use this actual state call inside our app.callback. So what we're going to do here is let's delete this input so we can start fresh. We still want the output to be the same. It's still gonna be this h1, this header one, and we still wanna edit the children, essentially the text displayed inside that h1 call. But what we're going to do now is, let's make sure our parentheses are balanced, perfect. We're going to create an input Remember, that goes inside of a list. And this input is now actually going to be that button we just created. So we're going to connect it to that submit button. And I can go up a little bit so you can see this. So it's connected to submit button. And we're going to say that the property it's connected to is the number of times that button was clicked. So n clicks. And then after our input list, we're going to provide another list. And that's going to be the state. So again, you can have multiple states just as you can have multiple inputs. So this state is going to be connected now to number in. And the property we want to connect here is value. Okay, so we're going to save that. Basically what we have now is our input is the action of clicking the HTML button element. The value typed into the input box is then stored inside of state. So it's stored here inside of the state. And it's not actually going to be passed into our output until the input registers a button click. So essentially, the state is what you're storing until the input is executed. And since we linked the input to a button, the input's not going to be executed until we actually click that button. Before, we were linking inputs to things like a core component input or a slider. So that immediately upon playing around with that component, the input was updated, meaning the output was updated. You can kind of think of state as stuff in between calling the input to the output. So you're just holding stuff in this state until you execute the input. So notice here, now I'm also passing n clicks as well as the number. And that's because these parameters are going to be fat passed in as first every parameter available in input and then every parameter available in state. So we have n clicks and number, so that's going to be n clicks and value here. Let's save this and see if our submit button works. We'll say Python, and in my case it's called basic.py. Let's make sure we didn't have any typos. Looks like it's running, so let's head over to the browser. All right, so we have our default value of one, and now as I begin adding more stuff to this input, nothing's actually getting updated. We have submit here, so that's the button with that children text, submit here, let's click on it. And there we go, now we have the updated text. And it's only going to update when I provide a click on this button. So essentially what's happening here is this is being stored in state and it doesn't get sent to this output until I click on this to execute the input. There we go. So let's go back and add in the number of clicks because we're actually keeping track of that as well. I'm going to close this and go back to the text editor. Okay, back to the text editor. Let's do control C to kill that server. And what we're going to do is we're going to report number. Well, in fact, let's make this as a string. We're just going to do some quick concatenating. We'll say number. And in fact, let's put this all in formatting. So we will say blank was typed in 
and button was clicked times. We'll do a dot .format. You can also do f string literals if you're on Python 3.6. And we're going to pass in number and end clicks here. So we'll say number was typed and button was clicked and clicks times. Again, remember, you can call this parameter whatever you want. It doesn't have to be number. It could just be something like input, although I would avoid using the word input because we use it so many times as a function call here. Let's save this and run this again. Basic.py. And there we go. So let's go back to our browser. OK, here I am back. Notice now how the text is being displayed. One was typed in, and button was clicked zero times. Let's update this to be 100. So now 100 is typed in. This is now being stored in state, and it doesn't get sent to the output until I click the input, which is this Submit Here button. Once I click that, it says 100 was typed in, and button was clicked one times. So n clicks is connected to the HTML component, and it's actually going to store how many times that button was clicked. So I can keep clicking on this button, and you'll see it keeps going up. And even if I type something new here, it'll keep track of how many times that was clicked. So you don't see any jump or resetting back to zero. And that's how state works. So again, it's basically adding to your capabilities of input and output. You set up your input, you set up your output, and then state is whatever you want to hold until you actually execute that input. All right. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you at the next lecture. Make sure to check the guidebook for more details on this lecture.